Wait, you're a Bears fan and you're not subscribed to my channel? Before this video starts, make sure to 1. Hit the subscribe button below to catch all Bears content right here on this podcast. 2. Hit the bell notification because you, my friend, are a diehard Bears fan. And 3. Like this video and tell all the Bears fans you know about the channel. Alright, that's better. Now that you're actually subscribed to the channel, make sure to bear down and enjoy this video. Hey, what's going on, Bears fans? Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Keek on the Mic, the podcast all about the Chicago Bears. Today, Bears fans, we have a very, very special guest, newly drafted 2021 Chicago Bear defensive back, Thomas Graham Jr. How you doing, Thomas? Doing good. How about yourself, big dog? I'm doing good. Doing good. It's just an absolute pleasure to finally get you on. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule uh, to come on to the podcast. So, how is Chicago treating you right now? It's, it's very good. I'm enjoying um, everything. I'm not really in uh, the full city of Chicago because our facilities, our practice facilities is in Lake Forest. But as of right, right. now, I'm enjoying everything right now. Right. So, so like I said, it's great to have you on. Uh, and out of all the Bears draft picks, um, I think Bears fans will agree with me right here. You had the best draft call out of all of them. So much emotion, uh, so much joy with your family. You celebrating with your family. Uh, take me through that moment when you found out that you were going to be a Chicago Bear. Oh, um, so it kind of it was it was a long day for me to start off just in general, just because I, I thought I was going to go go out the board higher. Uh, I was in my room. Uh, my sister was next to me. She was. Uh, basically just like sitting there just being just being a big sister so I'm just laying down I was actually asleep she woke me up um I got a phone call um and that was actually from who was oh that was the Bucks but they were talking about like an undrafted free agent so in my head I'm just like wow I might not get drafted so then I go to undrafted free agency and probably like 30 seconds after I hung up the phone I got another phone call and it was the Bears at this time and it was just like uh, Thomas, uh, is this Thomas Graham Jr.? And I was like, yes. And I was like, I'm about to hand the phone to Matt Nagy. And then so in my head, I'm thinking like, Matt Nagy's the Bears head coach. I was yeah. just like, this this actually might be like, you feel me, them talking, that they're about to draft me. So in my head, I'm just like, please don't be another undrafted free agency. And, then, and Matt asked me how my day was going. I told him, long and frustrating. And then he was like, why well, would it be frustrating when it just got drafted? And then like my first emotion was just like tears, like tears of joy. Like Thomas, you finally, you feel me, got your opportunity, you got your name called. Uh, feel me, this is your chance. And kind of just went through there. My parents was like all right there. I had just walked back into the living room. I had went back to the back room before that. And then everybody was just jumping and celebrating. And then that's when everything happened. Yeah, it was a great moment. Great to see you celebrating with your family. And this is honestly my favorite part of the draft is uh, seeing young men, uh, their dreams come true. So uh, congrats on that. And you did mention that you told Matt Nagy that your time waiting to be drafted was long and frustrating. What was the most frustrating part um, about that draft process? Um, just like not hearing my name called um, while well, seeing like, seeing others around me get their name called and like it was just kind of just like a moment to where like I was happy and enjoyed for like a lot of my brothers because I have a lot of friends teammates people I met through the camp circuit of high school uh they playing against in college you get drafted and I was happy for them uh rooting up and down jumping but it was just like I couldn't truly celebrate yet because like I was more antsy and waiting on my time for it to be called like and wanting to like make sure I did enough work to put myself in position to get my name called. So I think like just the doubt is what made it, what made it the hardest part. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 that's what us Bears fans were were kind of happy about. Obviously, we wished you got drafted higher, but where you got picked on the board was an absolute steal. And Bears fans already absolutely love you in Chicago. You were ranked by the PFF board, 76th, and got picked in the sixth round. So for you to drop that low, that far, is is incredible to me. I, I thought you definitely would have got picked higher. Um, but we are happy to have you here in Chicago, for sure. You, you were part of arguably the best Chicago Bears draft in a long time. How have the Bears fans embraced you since you have been drafted? Um, amazing. Uh, they shot my following rate up a lot. <laughs> I know that for <laughs> sure. On Instagram, yeah, yeah. man, uh, Instagram and Twitter, they always interacting with a lot of my posts. Um, 
definitely when I post bear stuff. So it's it's it's, it's kind of amazing. Um, some of them, some a lot of the fans have certain takes very similar to mine. Like they ask me, um, LeBron or MJ, and I say MJ, <laughs> and then. All right. <laughs> So all of them agree with me on that. So that was like kind of one of the the good starts, at least for me on my Chicago Bears fan. Uh, yeah, career. I could be I could be honest with you. If you I, we wouldn't have hated you if you said LeBron. Obviously, we would have still loved you. But you know, you being in Chicago now, you have to know who the true goat is in basketball, right? So, well, my true goat is Kobe, but you feel yeah. me? I still pick Jordan over Brian. Absolutely. Absolutely. And especially, you know, like I said, you being in Chicago now, all, all Bears fans or most Bears fans are going to say MJ. So I'm, I'm, I'm and, and I'm I'm with Kobe, too, as well. Kobe and MJ are up there of my two goats. So I'm glad you we kind of agree on that aspect. So you you know, a lot of Bears fans are going to be curious about this because you get to get to see him and practice firsthand. You and Justin Fields being part of the same draft class. Uh, tell us what you have seen in Justin Fields so far that makes you think that he can actually be the Bears franchise quarterback. Uh, I think like the best, the, one of the best qualities of him uh, is his confidence. Oops. Is his confidence is kind of my, I think his best quality just because like he walks around like you feel me with that, with that swagger that you just like, yeah, like this is my quarterback. Man. He, yeah. He, he wouldn't have got picked where he's at in the position he's at if he didn't have the skill level. So we already kind of know where that comes. And then kind of his, his willingness to learn, like, because he's somebody that I actually hang out with out here. Um, so, like, we like, just talk about practice and then, like, kind of what he's seen on this throw and, like, what made him throw that kind of to help me. And then I let him know, like, okay, like, this is kind of how I was playing it or disguising it to make you think that. So it's just like uh, – is being able to like his willingness to like actually listen in and and actually doing things to make not just himself better but everybody else around him better and that's what you want in a quarterback. Absolutely, and you you both have that that real big chip on your shoulder. So what is it like to compete with him at practice? You being on the defensive side and him being the quarterback. Uh, it's good, um, definitely because I really haven't had a quarterback that talk mess back. So like we'd be talking <laughs> mess to each other and like. He gonna respond back, and it's just like, like I love that. Like you feel me? He he embraces the competition. Like he's just like, all right. Like you feel me? You might have got me this rep. Like or you feel me? He'll be like, you lucky I threw you. Like you feel me? I let you off with a bad ball or something. So like you know, we just talk talk mess to each other. So it's just like it's very fun to be able to have that. Like somebody that actually you feel me? Not just loves the game much as you, but still got that chip on each other just like you do. Absolutely, and that's really good to hear that you guys both have that competitive nature. That's what's going to get the Chicago Bears better at the end of the day. And, Thomas, you have to know by now that Chicago Bears have a very rich history on the defensive side of the ball. What makes you most excited about joining this Chicago Bears defense? Um, Just being able to play with, like, a whole complete defense. Like, if you want to go base, if you want to go five down, D lineman, like, if you want to go – like, basically, whatever you want to go defensively, like – we have the aspects and the, the the players to do it, and I just love that we can run any defense we were, were pleased to run um, at any time. Basically, we were able to adjust with that with any scheme, and I feel like I, I truly haven't like had that to be able to be that deep at every single position. Uh, for me, especially defensive line, uh, I've I've never had multiple multiply good pass rushers like from being able to pass rush from every position like. It's like we all kind of grew together definitely at my time at Oregon. So it's just like we all got better um, slowly. But like here, it's just like kind of there. It's just like just imagine having all them as a freshman. Like, yeah. Like when they were juniors and seniors, uh, just because yeah. one, you being in the league and then some of these dudes specialize in this. Like, these are the All Americans from every school. So it's just like being able to play with that weekly and daily is, is amazing. Knowing that you're that quarterback, if they don't get the ball off in, in two seconds, Khalil Mack is there for the sack. Yeah, yeah. Or or Akeem Hicks is coming Hicks. up the middle, you know, getting and Eddie Goldman got, back. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you got you got a lot of good people. You got Mario Edwards. You got a, a bunch of people coming off. Right. Then having those line, Like, I ain't, I'm not going to lie, I've never played with a linebacker as fast as Roquan either. Uh, <laughs> it's it's crazy how much ground he makes up in practice. Just right. being on the field, seeing it. I remember before we even got on the field, we did – we were just doing, like, the training um, – 
before OTAs, uh, what you account that as spring training or summer training, however you want to count it. And he was just, just going crazy. I'm just like, wow, I didn't even know he was this like I knew he was fast. I knew he went four <laughs> three, but I I never seen four three move like this at a linebacker position. Like this big, this fast, this quick, and still strong. Like it's, it's, it was just crazy to me. And then just think about it, you know, you have a young linebacker like him, but then you have the veteran experience mm-hmm. of Danny Trevathan as well. Oh, what? So, he makes so many plays um, based off of experience and, and, and adding skill on top of each other. Uh, seeing that, seeing that is amazing. And then having like just the veteran DBs there, uh, being able to learn from them, um, every single one of them, even though Jalen Johnson, me in the same class, just, just being able to see, he put me the growth of his game in just one year. Uh, I used to watch his film when I was at Oregon because uh, he was one of the only corners that pressed as much as we did up at Oregon. So being able to see just like the growth of his game, being able to see um, Desmond Trufant was coached by the same coach um, in college and being able to see see how he 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 plays his games and the stuff that he still does that, that our coach had taught us uh, when we were back in college because I used to watch his, his like when we used to do it, learn a new drill, I watched his individual tape from college. So when he was at UW, uh, his senior year, I was watching his his individual tape, so it was just like kind of cool just to be able to actually be in the presence. Uh, Eddie Jackson, he probably didn't remember. We talked about it too um, already. But when he first went to uh, when he was at Bama his last year, I was I was up there on a recruiting visit, so it was just like kind of cool to see and play yeah. with people that you actually like, actually genuinely looked up to or or played along and respected, right here on the next level with you. Right, exactly, and obviously all the players that we're talking about right now uh, complete a defense full of dogs. That's what um, a lot of Bears fans, a lot of Bears players will tell you, that there's a bunch of dogs, dogs in this defense. Dogs. And and you are just that growing number of people that we're adding on to this defense that have that dog mentality that's going to help this defense um, succeed, hopefully, in this coming up season. But yeah. who are you most looking forward to uh, to playing with on the Chicago Bears defense? Um. I say it's it's between roughly like three people. Uh, Khalil Mack, obviously. Yeah. Uh, just just because like my dad's a big Raider fan, so just like when he was on the Raiders, uh, to when he got with the Bears, I always watch watch his game. And then I say uh, Eddie Jackson, um, just because like I just remember his his like first two seasons in the league. Like I'm like every time you yeah. looked up. It was a Eddie Jackson pick, and he wasn't just picking it; he was cribbing it. And then Jalen yes. Johnson, uh, just because we always played against each other, we never played with each other. We go to seven on seven camps or games. We playing against each other. Uh, we go to you feel me to like Nike Open and stuff like that. We playing against each other uh, in college. We played against each other, so it was just like we finally get to be on the same team as somebody that's like well respected, not just by me but by everybody. And obviously, you know, the Bears drafting you, you you probably know now that the Bears recently released Kyle Fuller, a very beloved cornerback in Chicago, very good cornerback. So do you feel any pressure to come in uh, right away and try to compete for the opposite side of Jalen Johnson? Um, just me as a football player, I'm coming in wanting to compete um, no matter what. Because uh, if I go in there and get my best every day, even if it's not good enough to start, it's going to make whoever is starting better, like, uh, I just want to make you feel me going there and make everybody better. So, yeah, I'm going in there with the mindset that I want to start um, day one. But if it happens, you feel me, it happens. If not, I'll be the best teammate I can. Uh, but no matter what, that's my job is to be the best teammate I possibly can, uh, add on to the game defense-wise, special teams-wise. So, uh, and try to get the corner job, nickel job, safety, whatever. Just as long as you feel me, I want to be on the field. So, but I got to feel me go and improve that. Absolutely, and and us Bears fans can already realize that you have the confidence uh, to be successful, not only in the NFL, but hopefully as a Chicago Bear. And knowing that huge chip that you have on your shoulder, what player um, are the Chicago Bears getting? Uh, just from a young, motivated player that, that, that wants to prove people wrong and, and show that he's better than, than where he got drafted. So kind of just prove everybody wrong in that aspect, but also just prove to myself that I am who I tell us tell myself I am absolutely and we're excited to see you play we're super happy that you're actually a Chicago Bear uh but now if it's okay with you I have some questions from from some more Chicago Bears fans and hopefully you can answer them for me I got you so the first question is do you prefer deep dish or thin crust pizza 
Ooh, deep dish. Deep dish. You know, being in Chicago, you know, they're known for their deep dish. Have you gotten the chance to eat deep dish yet? Um, we had Illuminati, I think that's what it's called. Okay. So yeah, we had that once. I wanna try the I wanna try there's like two or three more that people told me to try. I wanna try those too though. Yeah, there's there's so many good deep dish places in Chicago. Oh man, you <laughs> try try not to eat too much of it though, because <laughs> it, it it will come back to haunt you real quick. I got you. Um, so the next question from the Bears fans is do you like the Cubs or White Sox? Oh, you see, um it's like a couple Cubs, I mean, said Cubs, White Sox players that I actually do like. Um, but when I went to that Cubs game, it was it was amazing. So I'm not going to make my, my pick until I actually go to a White Sox game. Okay, okay, that's fair. That's fair. The next question is, do you hate the Green Bay Packers as much as we do? Uh, I got, like, some, some big bros on the team, so I, I like them. But, like, when it comes to the team, they're my rival, so I don't like the team. Okay. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. But once it's game time, it's game time. So that that's a fair answer. And the last one from the Chicago Bears fan is, what is one thing you are looking forward to doing in Chicago? Exploring downtown more. Uh, definitely kind of seeing some of the, the landmarks. Uh, some of the – because I heard there's like a couple museums down there too. So I just want to go down there and just actually just explore it um, and see – some places that like everybody posts pictures at and stuff like that and and see what type of touristy spots you guys actually should have. All right. Awesome. Awesome. You're going to get a lot of time to do that. But once again, Thomas, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of kick on the mic. I really, really, really appreciate it. And I wish you nothing but the best uh, for this upcoming season. All right. Thank you. Now this is a podcast all about bears. You either cheering for this team or just pulling your hair. I like to take a minute, just sit right back and tell you how I became the number one Bears fan. That boy is Benny Cake on the mic, cake on the mic. Cake on the mic, cake on the mic. People, that's the intro. Sacramento, Sacramento, California, born and raised. And Antelope is where I spend most of my days. Talk bad about my team, you must be a clown. This is Keek on the mic, so you know you better bear down. Bear down.